She's calling to us. Grandmother is calling. Generation with ever more notes, pitch rows, pitch classes. That it might be interesting to combine minimalism, you know, Steve Wright's name was invoked here by some of these spend. Combine minimal, minimalism with 12 tones, and this way it might sound more like pop music. So uh, here goes the 12 tone sneakers, and just so you know how they're working. Um, they are working on an accelerometer, and the sneakers are reading the X, Y position of my foot in space. And uh, what I do is select a tone row, you'll hear the prime, unfold. But instead of just opening once, I do it 12 times. And while the prime is being reiterated 12 times, and I don't have to tell you what 12 times 12 is, but it's a very important number, while it is unfolding, I am selecting in different places in space pitch sets, in other words, chords, from that row. And then after 12 iterations, then we go on to the retrograde, the inversion, then the inver 12 of the inversion, 12 of the retro inversion. Got it? Any questions? Okay. <laughs> Ready? 12 tone sneakers. Let's see if we can make it happen. Okay. 
information this evening, but I'll just finish by saying that, Erica, did you miss that whole show? Yes. I'll, have to do it. I'll have to do it for you again. Um, synesthesia is, very, is a very interesting concept. Uh, I don't think that it is, I mean, you're of course entitled to your opinion, and you know, it's brilliant, but, uh, you know, Beethoven really <laughs> believed in synesthesia. Apparently he was what they call a synesthesiast, which means that certain people, Certain people with perfect pitch and people who are high, high, high musical intelligence do see tones and colors um, somehow key to one another. And I'm a little bit that, like that. My parents are both visual artists. And so um, it's been a great project of mine all my life, even when I had rock bands and was doing some of these music videos in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, 
to try to find visual equivalents for music because I I'm just totally love I just love like beautiful things and I like love music so I always want to put them together. Um, I'm going to give you now I'm going to finish with a um, video of where I want to go with this and maybe those of you who are brilliant programmers or, or conceptual thinkers will have some ideas about how it can be achieved. Um, here is here is a bit video that you'll see on the right and this is a I am a painter, you can see my paintings on my website and uh, one way that I paint is to put strap cameras on both wrists while I'm painting so that I am filming the energy trails of my, of my paint as they're streaming out of my wrists. And then I do a kind of a manual cut up like Sven does of the video and recombine it with music that I have then both composed using traditional notation and the sneakers of Samothrace. So I'm, I'm hoping that by the time I return this time, <laughs> that I will be able to, I, what, I, what I see, you know, what I see with these sneakers is a standalone where I'm able to actually appear to have a stream of uh, the energy trail of the paint, what would be coming out of my brush and that this stream would be transformed in much the way that you can transform any kind of visual data in, in uh, Photoshop. You know, you can do all kinds. You can change the saturation. You can change the hue. You can change the density. You can change the, uh, the actual shape of it. So why couldn't I have the same thing happening? So that's where I'm going. But I, I, what I've done is a, uh, a simulation of the future. And uh, I'm going I'm to get this together. So here we go. I'll just play you a little of this. And you, here you'll hear some fully realized. This is my Psalm Jar series. And I'll actually turn up the, turn up the sound. Is the sound going? Because the sound. And you'll hear this is a Native American uh, tree branch instrument. These shapes are coming off of an interactive color wheel that is on the web in England. And uh, this would be the sneakers picking up patches of color from it and then projected onto my energy trench. And I think it looks quite, uh, it's a bauhaus quality, it's quite modern, I think it's quite attractive. Way I want you. This is a, a welcome song from my tribe, and I'll just go out and sing it. like this in Europe, but this is made out of a tree branch, and uh, my dad says we hollow out the heartwood of the tree, and then we fill it with our own heart. It's uh, quite, this will calm you down after these fascinating lectures.
Okay, what's your question? <laughs> What you started, started inventing for, for the kids, for, yeah. uh, is, is it ever applied? Is it uh, now you know, an uh, application in this institution? You know, I began to realize that the wheelchair accessible keyboard was not a very practical idea, and that that it would be better to put the music in their shoes. Yes, uh, so I understood that they, they, these, these come uh, out of that idea. Yes, but and that would have used a different one sensor. One. And that would have used a contact sensor. And actually, uh, it's just not interesting enough. I actually made a couple of them. I made a couple of them, but I didn't have enough control. And this is what led me to the accelerometer. And so I'm about to add two more sensors to this to give, give me an even greater degree of control. Because what do we know about a keyboard? We know that when I hit this note, that's no matter what it sounds like, that's going to be do. That's going to be do for the rest of my life. It's going to be right there. That is dope. I know where it is. But unfortunately, I have a sort of kind of fuzzy, fuzzy space problem with my accelerometer because the X, X, Y, you see me searching for sounds because the X, Y keeps moving around. So I'm going to be putting uh, compasses, magnetrons, and a gyroscope in these in the next couple of weeks in order to make it very specific. And this was the problem with having a big keyboard like that. I mean, you're like, you know, just just wasn't a good instrument. It was some, It was a bad instrument. Like I, I love this about creativity, which is very often you have bad ideas that happen on the way to the good ideas. You even see this in biology, you know, where God starts off, or you know, nature starts. I didn't mean to say God. Sorry. sorry. Uh, nature starts off 3.5 billion years ago, you know, with uh, bacteria living in, you know, very hot sulfur, you know, sulfur eating bacteria. And then through about six extinctions, you know, we finally get to us. And we're great, right? Don't answer. Okay, next question. Anybody? Okay, time for beer. Let's go. Is that it?